I want to share with you for a moment Jesus Christ's accidental resurrection. Because Jesus has got so much power that if he burps, something may get saved. If he burps, someone may resurrect. It's not a question if the power can do it. It's a question, are you going to position yourself for the resurrection? I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm going to tell you, even after you get that resurrection of Jesus Christ, through your own personal resurrection of salvation, you see, it starts off with faith in his resurrection, because whosoever believeth and is baptized, why do you get baptized? I get baptized and I believe in his resurrection, and when I get baptized, I get to have my own resurrection. It's not enough today that you believe in Jesus Christ's resurrection. You've got to have your own resurrection. Some of you are here today because of the religious holiday. The religious holiday isn't going to help you because when you leave the store without the power of the resurrection in your life, you go back to your own life. But if you got the power of the resurrection, then you can stay with the new life. John chapter 18, verse number 2. This is powerful. They came for Jesus by night with 600 brigades of soldiers. And they came to apprehend him in the garden. Jesus would be betrayed by one of his own. Don't think the betrayal that you have experienced in your life and the pains that you have experienced in your life that has been wasted by God. I'm here to tell someone today that the pain that you have been suffering by people, that God has not forsaken you and God has not abandoned you, but that he is positioning you for a resurrection. Because there is no resurrection without suffering. Suffering precedes the resurrection. Jesus could not have a resurrection if he did not have suffering. And he could not have a great resurrection if there was not great suffering. Your suffering is not in vain. But I'm here to charge somebody. Don't waste the trial that you're going through. Don't waste the suffering that you're going through. Because God hasn't forsaken you. And God hasn't abandoned you. And even though you feel down in your spirit, you're positioned for a resurrection. He's getting ready to blast you out of that situation. He's going to pull you out of your darkness. He's going to pull you out of your midnight hour. You see, the suffering is the darkness that tries to destroy you. It's when the devil comes and said, I will destroy your marriage. I will destroy your kids. I will destroy the thing that you love. And then it even appears as that it is effective. Because there are some of you today that have tasted the bitter pain of injustice in your life. And you said, what happened? It was suffering. But suffering, that's positioned you for a resurrection. Some of you have done all that you can do and you still ended up divorced. Some of you have done all that you can do and you still didn't get the promotion. Some of you have done all that you can do and disease has struck your body. Some of you have done all that you can do and you were still castigated by society. You've suffered, and you suffered much, and the devil has tried to destroy you, and you wanted to quit, and you wanted to walk away, but there was something inside of you that said, no, don't throw in the towel, and you didn't know what it was, and you didn't know why it was, but I mean to tell you, there's a resurrection inside of you. All right, let me get a hold of myself here. Oh, Jesus. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. See, Judas knew the place. Judas 
knew Jesus' secret. His secret place where he would go. And now Judas was going to invade that place. Ready to betray Jesus. Judas then having received a ban of men. A ban. Roman history records that this would have been 600 soldiers. A brigade of soldiers that consisted of 600. Fully armed and fully vested. Ready for combat. They came with swords. They came ready for a fight. And they came ready to intimidate the Savior. But I want you to know that our Savior is not a coward. And our Savior is not a, intimidated by the threats of this world. And you may get afraid in your own strength. But you've got to stand in the strength of Jesus Christ. Because he is of the tribe of the Lion of Judah. And if you can step into his strength, his strength will become your strength. I want you to see what happens. They came with a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees. Cometh thither with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Someone say, weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things. That should come upon him. You see that's why it's good to have the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost alerts you to what's going on. Knowing all things. Jesus operating in the gifts of the Spirit. With the word of knowledge. They thinking that they're going to, to, to ambush him and surprise him. But in reality Jesus just had a prayer meeting. He just got on this ground. And he began to sweat great drops of blood. He just had a battle on the ground. Why? Because he was enduring some suffering and he was positioning himself that he could have a resurrection. See, this is why people cave in and quit. Because when Jesus went through his suffering, he dropped to the ground in prayer. And he didn't get up until he had victory over that situation. We've got to learn how to pray during the times of our suffering. We've got to learn to cry out during the times of our suffering. But your cry has got to be to the one that can deliver you. Suffering either pushes you to Christ. Or suffering will push you away from Christ. If your heart is for the Lord, you're going to go towards Christ. But if your heart is for yourself, you're going to go away from Christ. You see, he wants to give you the resurrection. He said, all that the Father gives me. He says, I'm not going to cast any of them away. It doesn't matter how jacked up they are. They can come on to me. What's your problem? You're a drug addict. Come on in. You can come on in. What's your problem? You're a whoremonger. Come on in. What's your problem? You got diseases? Come on in. What's your problem? Come on in. What's your problem? Come on in. It doesn't matter what the problem is. You can all still come into the kingdom. Because once you get into the kingdom and you get the resurrection, the first thing he's going to do is clean you up. The first thing he's going to do is take off that old robe of sin. The first thing he's going to do, he's going to strip you of that thing because he's going to make you new and afresh. He's going to transform your life. 